and that is switching between azimuth quadrant and dip direction dip. Uh, so if we start out with an azimuth, let's say our bed is striking 115, um, 44 degrees northeast. So this is an azimuth. So before we try to um, convert this to quadrant and dip, dip direction, or dip direction, dip, um, let's see if this makes sense. So if we have something, we'll say uh, this blue pen is towards the north. If we are striking 115, so that's 90, maybe 115 is like that, does it make sense for us to be dipping towards the northeast? Well, our strike would be northwest to southeast, correct? 180 degrees. So if we're perpendicular to that, that puts us here. Yes, that would make sense that we would be dipping to the northeast. We could have also been dipping towards the southwest as well. Um, but with this north notation of northeast on there, we know that it's dipping this way. So that makes sense. We can continue. So azimuth 115, 44 northeast. What if we wanted to transform that into quadrant. Well, 115 is past 90 degrees, right? So we're now in the southern hemisphere, so that we know it's going to be south. Um, and then 115 southern, uh, we're also going to go from the south, which is at 180. So 180 minus 115 is 65. So south 65 uh, we also know that 115 is placed in the western or eastern hemisphere eastern hemisphere right so south 65 degrees towards the east and that's our strike with dip dip is going to be the same in both azimuth and quadrant so the dip is also going to be 44 northeast. Uh, so let's go through this again. Uh, 115. 115 would put us in the southeast, right? 90 degrees, 180. 115 would probably be about there. And from south, we're 65 degrees east. So south, 65 degrees towards the east with a dip of 44 degrees to northeast. That stays the same. Finally, we're going to do uh, which you'll see on the lab um, on Friday, as well as the take home lab from last Friday, is dip direction dip. So, this is just a third way we can note our um, plane, the orientation of the plane. Um, I prefer this way. You don't have to um, kind of deal with the two strikes or two strike numbers, same strike, um, and it already gives you dip direction. So, dip direction dip. We've heard about dip before. We know how to find that angle. Dip direction is just the um, angle which it's uh, dipping. So, if we do dip direction dip, we know that um, we'll take 115 in quadrant. We know that it's striking uh, 115. The dip direction is 90 degrees from strike, correct? Whenever we have strike, dip is always 90 degrees from it. So if we have, you know, these two numbers on a stereo net, which, you know, whatever they are, we know that 90 degrees from that would be our dip direction. So if we were to take 115, um, in this case, we could either add or subtract. Let's just subtract. So if we subtract 90, <clears throat> that puts us at 25 degrees, right? 115 minus 90 is 25. So we know that we are dipping towards the northeast. And 
now we can check, okay, um, we know we're dipping towards the northeast. The dip direction would have to be in the northeast. So if we're dipping 25 degrees, that would put us within the northeast. So we would then write this as dip direction 0 to 5 dip 44. So to draw this out a little better, if we are striking 115, let me draw this. One fifteen, say that's like um, that's our strike line. We want to figure out uh, the dip direction. So dip, we know is somewhere in the northeast. If we add ninety degrees, which we did up here, that's a ninety degree angle. We know that if you add 90, 90 degrees to that you will get a number for your dip direction. In this case, we got 0, 2, 5. So that is where we got that number from. OK. So we figured that out. Um, there's just multiple ways we will be um, looking at putting planes on a stereo net. So understanding all three of these ways um, will be important for that. All right, so now we have talked about the kind of different ways um, you can note your strike and dip. Let's go ahead and move on to actually plotting on our stereo net. So once again, remember we um, plotted wherever these uh, degrees land on our primitive circle, and we've lined it up with the stereo net that's behind it. So now let's go through plotting a plane on a stereo net. So let's take um, the plane we just talked about between azimuth quadrant and dip direction dip. We'll do it in azimuth. So remember it was 115, 44, northeast. So what we're going to do is the first thing to do is to mark your um, strike. So remember 115 is going to be somewhere in the southern hemisphere in the southeast. Um, but you need to make sure that you are lined up with the stereo net behind it. So you want to make sure south is directly on that tick for south on the stereo net behind it. Um, if we go through and start over here, 90, 100, 110, 120, okay, so we're 115. We're somewhere in the middle here. On your stereo net, these blocks are broken out in twos. So 110 would be, you have 112, 114, 116, 118, 120. So 115 would be marked in the middle. Okay, so we've marked our 115 um, on the primitive circle as our strike. We are now going to um, plot our dip. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking 115.44 northeast and figuring out which way to rotate our paper to plot our dip. So the way to do this is you'll take your dip direction. We know that we're plotting in the south, so if we are below the southern hemisphere, we are going to take our tick measurement, in this case it's almost a black dot, and move it to the south. If we were um, in the northern hemisphere, say we're only striking instead of 115, maybe 15 degrees, we're going to take that tick to the north. So since we're at 115, 115 is below 90 and below 270, we are going to move our tick to the south. Once that tick is lined up with the south, we need to figure out, okay, we're going to count in from either this side on along the horizontal line or that side along the horizontal line. And the way you figure this out is you look at your dip direction. So our dip direction is towards the northeast. Since our dip direction is towards the northeast, after we move our strike to the south, we are going to count in from the east 
however much uh, it's dipping. So again, this could go the other way. Say we were striking 115 but dipping 44 degrees to the southwest, we would still move this guy to the south, our tick mark there, but since we are dipping to the southwest instead of the northeast, we could or we would uh, move in 44 degrees from the west. So let's do that. So we know we're on the south, we know we were dipping towards um, the northeast, and since we're dipping towards the east some degree, we're going to count in from this horizontal line up here. Make sure that's lined up. From this horizontal, horizontal line right here, 44 degrees. And remember, these are broken up into um, each one of these circles or great circles um, is broken up into twos. So if we look across here at horizontal, we'll have two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's ten degrees and it's these thicker dark bold lines. So we know we're at 44 so we can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 42, 44. So we've marked where it is uh, along that horizontal and for the last part of plotting our plane is we are going to draw along the great circle from the south here to where our tick is along the great circle through our dip all the way to the north. So what you'll do is you'll start here. You'll see that it line, lines up with this great circle here and you're just going to follow that circle all the way down. So we got the southern part. For you guys. Now we'll do the northern part. You're just going to follow that great circle all the way up. Until you hit the other side. And there you go.